What gender categories exist within each culture, and even what each gender means, can vary dramatically from one society to the next. So, at the very surface level, we can say that in places like the United States, we have two gender categories, men and women, as we mentioned, while in other places, India for example, there might be three gender categories. So, India has men, women, and hydra, right? Hydra, who are neither men nor women, and they're sort of this in-between category. In other societies, there might be four or sometimes even five gender categories. Again, they refer to physiological bodies, but what they're doing is they're mapping meaning onto those, onto those bodies. So at the very surface, it's interesting to note that different societies might have different numbers of genders, but then even what do those genders mean? So what in the United States does it mean to be a woman? If we try to imagine, or if you ask yourself uh, what your gender category is and what does it mean to you to have that gender category, you might come up with some adjectives. Um, so for example, I have the gender uh, category woman, and to me being a woman means being strong, nurturing, um, supportive, uh, maybe uh, gentle, soft, I don't know, whatever adjectives come to mind. And you might have some others, probably you have others, some might be very different, some slightly different. Uh, or if you're a man, you might have other categories. Uh, and if you somehow don't fit, then, you're prob then you probably have very specific ideas about what it means to have your gender category. Uh, and so those are all good and well, but they are culturally learned adjectives, right? It has these adjectives, the ones that I described for my own understanding of what it means for me to be a woman, have nothing to do with anything that's happening to me on a biological, physiological, or anatomical level, right? So um, it's not that because I have a uterus or um, or such and such chromosomes or such and such hormones that that's what makes me uh, imagine womanhood as you know gentle and nurturing etc strong and everything else it's that society has ascribed those meanings they've mapped them painted them if you will onto the body so um, so I guess one metaphor that I like to use is if if, the, if sex is the actual body then gender is the clothing that um, that that surrounds the body and that gives it meaning so that we read each other in those terms but what it means to be a woman or a man or a hydra or anything else in another society might mean really different things because what we're talking about again are not physiological biological categories but cultural ones so what it means to be a woman in Afghanistan is distinctly different and we know this is from our ethnography than what it means to be a woman in the United States what it means to be a woman in the United States is different from what it means to be a woman in India and actually interestingly uh, and relevant to the article that you read what it means to belong to a third category in India is quite distinct from what it means to belong to a third category in the United States. As you might recall, in India, there's an expectation that you will belong into one of three categories. And so if you do, so if you're either man or woman or hydra, then you're kind of considered standard, if you will, or normal, or you fit the expectations. There is an expectation that people will fit into different categories. Now, are different genders treated differently or ostracized? Absolutely, that's true in the United States too. That doesn't mean that the category doesn't exist. So we, we know that women um, experience the world differently from men in the United States, just as Hydra experience the world different from men or women in India. Um, but that's a gender that's understood to exist. And so when people fall into that gender, there's uh, an acceptance of that category. In the United States, there are plenty of people, you might know some, you might be some, um, who don't fit into the category gender, uh, the category woman or man. You might fall outside of those categories, but it just so happens that in the United States, we don't have a space for a third gender. We expect everyone to fall into either the category man or woman, and then if someone doesn't, then we actually describe that experience as somehow pathological. Let me qualify what I just said. As a society, the hegemonic perspective, the common sense that has a, quite a bit of power behind it, that makes itself seem as, it's, as though it's the only common sense, says that you must be either man or woman, and if you don't fall into one of those, then we have to fix that. Even people who themselves don't feel like they don't fit into might describe themselves as being trans 
gender. But if you notice, even that terminology itself, transgender, assumes that there's two sides. You're switching from one to the other. You're either on one side of the gender or you transfer to the other gender. And the implication in that very term is that there's only two, which is very indicative of Western, specifically in this case American society, that only makes space for two genders and anyone who falls outside of it is seen as somehow problematic to society. Society has to figure out how to work things out or probably more realistically, the person who doesn't fit in has to figure out how to make themselves fit into either one or another.